Welcome to this basic gun safety video. My name is Dan Kidder and I've been a firearms instructor for 27 years and have taught federal agencies, police departments, and regular folks how to be safe and become better shooters for nearly three decades. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse and is only available for those who have recently purchased a firearm. You may have recently purchased your first firearm or your hundredth, but no matter your level of firearms experience, everyone can benefit from additional instruction. This video is the first part of a series of videos produced to help you become safer, more proficient, and more confident in using your firearm. By watching this video, you affirmatively agree to assume all liability for your use of this information and agree to hold Sportsman's Warehouse and me harmless for your use or misuse of this information. The information contained in this video is for educational purposes only, and the user assumes all responsibility for how it is used. This video will cover the basics of gun safety and will be applicable to handguns and long guns including both rifles and shotguns. Different videos will have specific operation of various types of firearms. Additional sections will be provided for basics of using a semi-automatic pistol, a revolver, a rifle, and a shotgun. Links will be provided to those videos in the description below. Because the laws are different in each locality, we will not go into legal issues regarding firearms, and it's important to consult with a legal expert or take a class on legal issues from someone familiar with the laws in your locality. This first video will not go into how to operate your gun or the fundamentals of using your gun. Other videos in the series will go into the basic operation of your firearm and the techniques to become proficient. While a video can cover important information on how to use your gun effectively, nothing can replace safe and intentional practice. It is our hope that these videos will give you confidence in your ability to safely use your gun and develop skill to become more proficient. This first video is designed to help you understand the basics of gun safety and teach you that being safe with your gun is as easy as one, two, three, four. The one key concept, the two primary causes of firearms related accidents, the three principles of gun safety, and the four basic rules of gun safety. Let's start with the one key concept, be safe. This means developing a safety mindset and deciding that safety matters. To become a safe and confident gun user, you need to make safety a priority. This means not taking shortcuts, making exceptions, or thinking that this one time won't hurt. Deciding to be safe means that you always exercise the utmost caution anytime you handle a firearm. This brings us to the two primary causes of firearms related accidents. The first is ignorance. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant about something. There are a lot of things about which I know very little or nothing. With a firearm, even with a lot of training and years of use, there are, will be things that you don't know about. As you learn, knowledge will replace ignorance and you'll learn more and more as you progress. The only inexcusable aspect of ignorance is believing that you cannot learn or refusing to gain knowledge. The next primary cause of firearm related accidents is carelessness. Ignorance means that you don't know any better. And while that can be dangerous, carelessness is far worse. Being careless means that you know better, but you do it anyway. This can be because you don't think it's a big deal, it is just this one time, or it couldn't possibly happen to you. I've seen very experienced firearms experts get injured or killed because they made one single exception to the rules of safe gun handling, and it cost them dearly. Not only is being careless a danger to yourself, it is also a danger to everyone around you. Imagine being careless and killing or injuring another person or a loved one. There's never an excuse for being careless with a gun. Most people drive a car daily. A motor vehicle has thousands of parts and hundreds and thousands of people are injured by a motor vehicle every year. In fact, you're 120 times more likely to be injured by a motor vehicle than by a firearm, according to the National Shooting Sports Foundation who keeps detailed statistics of unintentional firearms accidents. Still, every day we get into our cars and we drive them without a second thought. We take basic precautions like wearing a seatbelt, using our turn signal, and looking both ways before pulling out into traffic. The point is, by using some basic precautions, every gun owner can safely use their firearm and become as comfortable using it as we are our vehicles. It isn't some mystic art. Nobody is born knowing how to use a motor vehicle or a firearm, and having the positive attitude that you can learn to safely use your gun is a key principle to becoming a safe firearms user. As I said, nobody is born knowing how to use a firearm. Even those who grow up around guns their entire lives learn poor gun handling skills. Proper training in firearms from a professional instructor will give you solid knowledge based upon best practices and lessons learned from accidents to make you a safe gun handler. 
Also, just because someone has a job that uses firearms, like a police officer or a gun shop clerk, doesn't just make them a source of good knowledge. There are many people in those positions who have excellent gun handling knowledge, but that is because they have taken good training. It's not simply because they have that job. Every one of us starts off as a blank slate. During the course of time using firearms, we acquire additional knowledge. There are many things that I've thought I knew about guns that either have been reinforced or refuted during my firearms career as I received more training. I've changed my mind about a lot of things in the nearly 30 years I've been using and training with firearms. Weigh the information that you receive with facts-based knowledge from organizations such as the National Rifle Association or the National Shooting Sports Foundation. They set the standards for safe gun handling information. Take the positive attitude that you can learn and the knowledge that you acquire and begin to practice. The first step is to become comfortable manipulating your firearm. I recommend using inert ammunition to practice loading and unloading. These snap caps from Azoom, sold at Sportsman's Warehouse, are a great tool to safely practice learning to be comfortable with loading and unloading your gun. They come in a variety of calibers and they will let you get comfortable with how your gun works in a safe way without live ammunition. As you get more comfortable with your gun, you can begin to take it to the range and practice shooting it. There are key fundamentals to master in each type of gun, pistol, rifle, shotgun, and revolver. Only practice with live ammunition in a safe location, such as a shooting range or a property that has been set up for shooting. By intentional practice, focusing on the fundamentals, you will rapidly progress to become a more skillful shooter. Watch our video on getting the most from your practice by clicking here. We will cover the fundamentals for each type of gun in the other videos in this series. Most firearms instructors recognize some variation of the four basic rules of gun safety. I use them the way that Colonel Jeff Cooper, author of The Modern Technique of the Pistol, first codified them. All guns are loaded, and even if they're not, treat them as if they are. Never treat a gun differently just because you know or think that it is unloaded. Guns are dangerous, and if misused and if you fail to treat them as dangerous just because you believe them to be unloaded, you are likely to cause an injury or death. Never let the muzzle cover anything that you are not willing to destroy. Imagine that a laser is coming out of the muzzle of your gun. Anything that that muzzle passes over is destroyed. If it's a body part, it gets cut off. If it's a priceless antique, it gets incinerated. If it's a loved one, they are vaporized. The reality is, if the gun should accidentally fire while it is pointing at something you did not intend to destroy, the result will be as extreme as imagining a laser had destroyed it. I see students who believe they are skillful with a gun often pass fingers or limbs in front of their gun while they are manipulating it. Make sure that as you learn to manipulate your gun that you become very aware of where that gun is pointing and what it is covering at all times. And never remain silent if you see someone else pointing a gun at you. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target and you have made the decision to fire. We call this the golden rule of gun safety. Around 90% of firearms accidents are caused by accidentally pulling the trigger. It's very rare for a gun to fire unless the trigger is pulled. The trigger finger should be pointed straight and kept outside of the trigger guard unless you have your sights on the target and you have made a conscious decision to fire the gun. Any time that you are manipulating the action of the gun, that finger needs to stay far away from the trigger. When you are holstering or unholstering, casing or uncasing, moving your gun around in the safe, you need to ensure that nothing can press that trigger. Be sure of your target and what is beyond it. Once a bullet leaves the barrel, it doesn't stop until it hits something or it runs out of energy. In some cases, that can be miles. Shooting ranges have some sort of a berm designed to stop the flight of a bullet. When defending yourself or hunting, you need to consider what is behind your target. If you're out hunting, before you take a shot at that animal, ask yourself what will happen to that bullet if it passes through the animal or if you miss. What is behind that animal? Do you know if there's a campground, a road, or houses that could be hit? If an assailant is between you and a schoolyard, what happens if you miss? You are responsible for every round that leaves your gun. And keep in mind that most interior walls and many exterior walls of a house will not stop a bullet. In addition to the one, two, three, four of gun safety, there are some other things to be aware of. Number one is be a knowledgeable gun user. When you purchase a new gun, it comes with a manual. This manual tells you many things about your gun, such as how to maintain and clean it, the types of ammunition it can use, and any special safety considerations for your gun. You should read the manual and understand what it says. If you buy a used gun, the manual can be found online. 
It is important to understand how your gun works, its parts, its controls, and special safety steps that you may need to take to safely use it. Not only should you understand how your gun works, but you should have a general knowledge of how each type of gun functions so that you can unload it. Other videos in this series will show you how to work the action of each type of gun, rifle, semi-automatic pistol, revolver, and shotgun. Watching these videos will give you a basic understanding of how to safely inspect these guns so that you can be a safe and knowledgeable gun handler. Number two, check that the gun is unloaded before cleaning. One of the most common times for accidental firearms injuries and death is during cleaning. Several types of guns on the market require that the trigger be pulled for disassembly, and rather than verifying that a gun is unloaded, the user will assume and pull the trigger. This often occurs while violating one or more of the four basic safety rules. If the gun is covering something you do not intend to destroy, or you are unaware of what is beyond where the gun is pointing when the gun fires, you or another person may be severely injured or killed. At the very least, you may cause significant and expensive property damage and face some legal trouble. Never assume that a gun is unloaded. Check to verify that it is unloaded and then follow the four rules of gun safety as you disassemble the gun for cleaning. Not only do you want to make absolutely positive that the gun is unloaded, it's a good practice to place any live ammunition in a different room or a drawer to avoid the gun from becoming loaded by accident and to keep the ammunition from being exposed to cleaning solvents that can damage the ammunition and make it unreliable or unsafe. Number three, function check. Once you've cleaned your gun, it's time to reassemble it according to the instructions in the owner's manual for your specific make and model. Once you've put it back together, you need to operate all of the controls, work the action, and point it in a safe direction and dry fire it. Dry firing is pulling the trigger on a gun that you know is unloaded and pointed in a safe direction. This assures that you have correctly assembled the gun. Even better is to intentionally load the gun with a dummy round or a snap cap so that you protect the firing pin and also prevent a live round from being fed into the action. Number four is check the barrel for obstructions. If anything becomes lodged in the barrel of your gun, it can cause the firearm to suffer a catastrophic failure. This can cause the barrel to explode when fired or cause parts of the gun to blow off and become dangerous flying projectiles. Anytime you go shooting, make sure that nothing is lodged in the barrel. We never do this by looking down the barrel of a gun without taking further steps. There are a few ways to do this safely. One is to disassemble the gun and look through the barrel from the breech end. This is the end of the barrel that a cartridge gets inserted into by the action cycling. For those guns that do not have an easily removed barrel, you can open the action and ensure that no ammunition is in the chamber, then insert a cleaning rod down the action and into the breech from the front of the gun. If there is nothing lodged in the barrel, the rod will come down the barrel from the front end and will be visible in the chamber. For guns that you cannot see into the action, laying your rod alongside the barrel and pinching the rod with your fingers where the barrel meets the action will give you the length of the rod necessary to show that the barrel is not obstructed. Slide the rod into the barrel, and if your fingers rest on the muzzle of the barrel, then you know that there is nothing inside the barrel. If the rod stops before your fingers contact the muzzle, then you know that there is some sort of obstruction. Things that can obstruct a barrel are mud from a hunter accidentally pressing the muzzle into the ground when crossing a fence, a child's toy if the gun was not stored properly and a child was able to place it inside the barrel, a bullet if the gun is an ammunition malfunction that causes the bullet to lodge in the barrel, and I've even seen a gun get a wasp nest built inside. Handing a gun to another person. At some point, you may desire to hand another person a gun. If you do this, always follow the four basic rules of gun safety. Open the action of the firearm and inspect it to make sure that the gun is unloaded. Keep that gun pointed in a safe direction. If the only safe direction is down, be aware that you're not pointing it at anyone's feet. Keep that finger outside of the trigger guard, and if you can, cover the trigger guard with your hand to prevent the person that you're handing the gun to from putting their finger on the trigger. Make sure that not only is the breech of the gun unloaded, but any ammunition feeding devices have been removed. And for a revolver, make sure that each chamber of the cylinder does not contain ammunition. I always ask the person I'm handing the gun to whether they have it, twice. The first time they may have been surprised by the question and may have automatically answered that they do. The second time they usually understand what you're asking and answer after getting a good grip on the firearm. If for some reason the gun falls, let it fall. Do not reach out and try to catch it. I know many knowledgeable gun users who have made this mistake and reached for a falling gun only to hit the trigger and have the gun fire. The mass majority of modern firearms are drop safe and will not fire from dropping. Rather than risking hitting the trigger trying to catch a falling gun, just let it hit the ground.
A few scratches on your gun are far better than a serious injury or death. Before you start practicing with live ammunition, it's important to learn some essential skills with your new gun. We'll go through these quickly in this video, but cover them in more detail in the other videos in this series. Loading is the act of placing ammunition in your gun. This is accomplished by placing cartridges into the firearm. This may be done by directly placing ammunition in the gun, or by placing the cartridges into an ammunition feeding device, such as a magazine. Once ammunition has been placed into the gun, the gun must be cocked to reset the action for firing, and also in some cases to transfer a cartridge from the feeding device into the chamber. For a bolt action or a lever action rifle, a pump shotgun, and for a single action revolver, this must be done for every shot. For a semi-automatic rifle, pistol, or shotgun, this only has to be done for the first shot fired. Then, the pressure generated by the firing cartridge will eject the spent case, load a fresh round, and also cock the gun to reset the trigger for firing. Decocking the firearm means to remove spring tension on the firing mechanism of the gun. The method of decocking will vary from firearm to firearm. For a firearm with a hammer, it means firmly grasping the hammer and controlling it while pulling the trigger to gently let it down. Many types, Many types of semi-automatic semi pistols, pistols have decocking levers, levers that safely, that safely let the hammer down without, without firing the gun. the gun. Some guns have an internal firing mechanism and have no way to decock the gun without unloading it and pulling the trigger while pointing it in a safe direction. Learning which manner of decocking your gun uses and knowing how to safely decock it is an essential skill. Knowing how to unload your gun is one of the most important essential skills. This involves removing any ammunition from any feeding device, but also the often overlooked step of removing a cartridge from the chamber. Just because you've removed the magazine does not mean the gun is unloaded. A round may remain in firing position in the chamber, and the gun may still be able to fire even with the magazine removed. Being able to lock open the action on your gun will allow you to easily view the chamber to ensure that the gun is unloaded. Just cycling the action with the feeding device empty does not guarantee that a live cartridge will be ejected and the chamber will be clear. It is important to be able to look inside the chamber and verify that there is no ammunition present. Different guns have different ways of locking open the action and we will cover each one in the other videos in this series. Not all firearms have external safeties. For those guns that have an external safety, it's an essential skill to be able to activate or deactivate that safety. It's important to note that a safety is a mechanical device that can fail, and even when there is a safety, it is important to always follow the four basic rules of gun safety in case the safety mechanism fails. Many of these essential skills will be covered in the owner's manual that comes with your new gun. The manual will explain and use diagrams and illustrations to demonstrate how your gun functions. It will describe the various parts and what their role is. The manual will explain how to clean and maintain your gun, including instructions on steps that you should take before firing your gun for the very first time. This will also include how to field strip your gun. Field stripping is taking your gun apart to the minimum number of pieces necessary to properly clean it. It is not necessary to fully disassemble every pin or spring in order to clean and oil your gun. You just need to take it down to a few pieces to get it clean. The manual will show you how to do this as well as how to reassemble it after cleaning. If it needs further disassembly beyond field stripping, you should take it to a gunsmith. The manual will also show you the various controls on your gun, such as a bolt release, a slide lock, a decocking lever, the loading bypass, the magazine release, the floor plate release, and other controls that may or not be present on your specific gun. Read and understand how each of these controls works. The manual will also cover the operation of the safeties. It is not uncommon for some guns to have multiple safety devices. For example, this 1911 pistol has a thumb safety as well as a grip safety. The thumb safety has to be pressed downward to fire. But in addition to allowing the gun to fire, pressing the thumb safety down also allows the gun to be cocked. The gun cannot be cocked or cycled while the thumb safety is engaged. The gun will not fire if the thumb safety is engaged, but it will also not fire when the safety is disengaged if the grip safety is not activated by properly holding the gun. Both the thumb safety and the grip safety must be properly deactivated for the gun to fire. Your manual will tell you the location of the safeties on your gun and how to use them. The manual will tell you whether your gun can be fired without a magazine inserted. Some guns are equipped with a magazine disconnect that will not allow the firing mechanism to operate without a magazine inserted. There are some common terms that will be discussed in your manual that it may be helpful to see and for me to explain. 
The slide on a semi-automatic pistol is the part of the pistol that moves back and forth when the gun is fired and that you must move to cock the gun and load around into the chamber. The grip is the vertical portion of the firearm that you hold onto with your dominant hand. The firing pin or internal firing mechanism is the part of the gun that moves forward to strike the primer on the cartridge to ignite the powder and fire the round. On some guns, this firing pin may be connected to the hammer. In others, it may be a striker that moves backward when the trigger is pulled and then springs forward to hit the primer. The bolt is the part of the gun that contains the breech face, the firing pin, and locks the cartridge into the chamber. Most guns have some manner of bolt, even though they are not bolt-action guns. The bolt may be held in place by rotating lugs to lock the bolt in place, or by spring tension. The breech face is the portion of the bolt that contacts the rear of the cartridge. It acts to prevent the fired cartridge from exiting the chamber until it is either manually released, or the action of the firing determines the gun is ready to move the bolt to extract the fired case and load a new round. The chamber of a gun is a portion of the barrel where the cartridge sits. The chamber is cut into the steel so that it matches the profile of the cartridge that will be inserted into it. It prevents the pressure generated at the time of firing from changing the shape of the casing and prevents the pressure from blowing back toward the shooter. Not all guns have hammers, but they do all have some moving part that impacts the firing pin to ignite the cartridge. Hammer-fired guns may have a visible spur coming from the rear of the gun, or they may have a cut-off or internal part that functions the same way. The hammer consists of a cam that moves to the rear when the hammer is cocked. A spur catches and holds the hammer back until the trigger is pulled, allowing the hammer to move forward and slam into the firing pin. Battery is not a part of a gun, but a condition in which the gun is a chamber sealed and the gun is ready to safely operate in a normal fashion. A gun that is out of battery does not have the chamber tightly sealed, so if the round were ignited, hot expanding gases would blow back toward the face of the shooter. Most guns have mechanisms in place that prevent the gun from firing while it is out of battery. A gun that is in battery will have the bolt locked and the chamber fully sealed to prevent injury to the shooter and will disengage any internal safety devices that prevent the gun from firing. The magazine is the box or tube into which cartridges are stacked for feeding into a firearm. It usually consists of a spring topped by a follower that places upward tension on the cartridges so that they may be inserted into the firearm by operation of the action. This is sometimes mistakenly referred to as a clip, but this is an incorrect term. A clip is a device used to load a magazine. Magazines can be either removable or internal to a firearm. The bore is the inside of the barrel. If the barrel is rifled, then the bore will have the rifling. If the bore is smooth, such as in a shotgun or a smooth bore muzzle loader, then there will not be any grooves cut into the bore. Rifling is a series of lands and grooves inside the bore that spiral down the length of the barrel. These lands, the high parts, and the grooves, the low parts, cause the bullet to spin as it moves down the bore. This spin imparts stability on the bullet, much like the spin placed on a football as it is thrown. The rotation on the bullet increases accuracy and distance. Caliber is the distance across the diameter of the bore and can be measured in imperial or metric units. If the diameter between the lands is 9 mm, then the caliber of the bullet of the gun will fire is a 9 mm. If it is 38 hundredths of an inch, then the caliber of the bullet is 38. This only tells you the diameter of the bullet and not the cartridge in which the gun is chambered. The cartridge consists of the bullet, the case, the powder, and the primer. The cartridge may be identified by the diameter of the bullet and the length of the case, like 9 by 19. It may also be expressed by the diameter of the bullet and the company that created the cartridge, like the 300 Winchester Magnum. Sometimes the cartridge will be expressed by abbreviating the name of the manufacturer by listing it on the box as 300 Win Mag. Occasionally, the cartridge will be expressed in various ways for the same cartridge. For example, a 9 by 19, 9 mm Parabellum, 9 mm NATO, 9 mm Luger are all the same cartridge. Other times, the cartridge may be similar enough that the gun can fire different cartridges with minimal differences. An example of this is a gun chambered in 5.56 mm can fire a 223 cartridge with minimal differences in point of aim and no safety considerations. However, a gun chambered in 223 Remington may not be able to safely handle the different chamber pressure of the 556 round. In the same way, a revolver chambered in 357 Magnum can safely fire a 38 Special. However, a gun chambered in 38 Special cannot fire a 357 Magnum. The 357 cartridges are too long to even fit into the 38 Special pistol, and the cylinder will not close. 
A 22 long rifle cartridge is different than a 22 Magnum or a 22 Hornet. Some 22 revolvers come with different cylinders that will fit the 22 long rifle, and another cylinder will hold the longer and wider base cartridge of the 22 Magnum, and both can be fired down the same barrel. Ammunition can get confusing, such as the 45 Automatic Colt Pistol, or ACP, used in semi-automatic, as opposed to the 45 Long Colt used in revolvers. Read your owner's manual so that you purchase the correct ammunition for your gun. If you are ever in doubt about whether a particular ammunition will work for your firearm, check with a sales associate to help find the correct ammunition for your gun. We'll talk more about selecting the correct ammunition a little later in this video. The primer on a cartridge is the impact-sensitive chemical that, when struck, burns to ignite the powder. The primer material can be either in a small metal cup in the center of the cartridge and is called a center fire, or it can be in the rim of the base of the case and is called a rim fire. Most of your rim fires are 17 or 22 caliber. The majority of your self-defense, varmint, big game, hunting, or shotgun rounds are center fire. The takedown is a mechanism on your gun that allows it to be disassembled. It is a lever, screw, or pin that once moved or removed allows the gun to be disassembled for cleaning or maintenance. Your manual will tell you the location of this mechanism and how to utilize it to take the gun apart. The slide lock is a device that will allow the slide on a semi-automatic pistol to lock the slide back and reveal the chamber. Its position and how it works is different for every make of gun. The manual will tell you where it is located and how to engage it. The slide lock will also engage automatically when your magazine is empty. It will not be possible to fully cycle the slide when there's an empty magazine inserted into the pistol. To fully cycle the slide with an empty magazine inserted, you will need to depress the slide lock as you pull back on the slide. This will allow the action on the pistol to be closed with an empty magazine. Not all semi-automatic pistols have a slide lock, and your manual will tell you if this is the case. The trigger is the mechanism that is activated to fire the gun. It's located just in front of the strong hand that grips the gun, and by pressing it to the rear, it removes any internal safety mechanisms that prevent the gun from firing if dropped, and also releases the hammer or internal firing mechanism and allows the gun to fire. The amount of force needed to fire the gun is measured in pounds or kilos. If it takes 2.2 pounds of force to move the trigger enough to fire, then that is the weight of that trigger. A trigger that is too light increases the risk that the gun will fire when you did not intend to fire it. A trigger that is too heavy will require much more force and concentration to make the gun fire. A good balance is for a lighter trigger on a hunting rifle or a competition gun and a heavier trigger on a self-defense gun so that you do not accidentally pull the trigger when startled. The reset is the point that the trigger moves forward to before it can fire again. The term is typically used in any semi-automatic where just returning the trigger to the reset point and then pulling the trigger again allows the gun to fire. In many guns, there is a bit of slack in the trigger, and proper trigger technique has the user take up the slack by pulling the trigger back until it meets resistance. This is the reset point, but it's arrived at from the front instead of returning the trigger forward after firing. We call this the wall, and it is the point where you should begin to gradually increase pressure until the gun fires. This will give you a smooth and consistent trigger press each time. When the shot has been fired, then the trigger only has to be returned to the reset point to fire again. This eliminates the need to remove the slack and restart your trigger press from scratch. A safety is a mechanical device or devices on a firearm that can prevent the gun from firing if the trigger is pulled and the safety is engaged. It's important to remember that the safety is a mechanical device and can fail so never rely solely on the safety to prevent injury or death. Always follow the four basic rules of gun safety. Your manual will tell you what safeties have to be disengaged to fire the gun. It will tell you where they are located and how to engage or disengage them. One of the most effective ways to prevent an accident with a firearm is to properly store your gun when it is not in use. Even though firearms accidents are at their lowest recorded levels ever, Every year, thousands of people are injured and hundreds are killed because people do not properly store their firearms. The number one way to prevent accidental injury or death with a gun is to properly store your gun so that it's not accessible to unauthorized persons. An improperly stored firearm is dangerous and it takes just a fraction of a second for a terrible tragedy to occur. All firearms accidents are preventable and properly storing your firearm is the best way to help prevent an accident. All firearms should be stored unloaded and separate from the ammunition when they are not in use. The most secure method of storage is to lock the gun in a safe. 
This may be a regular safe used for storing documents and valuables, or a safe designed specifically for firearms. It may have a fire rating to protect the contents from fire, or it may just be a metal cabinet that securely locks so that unauthorized persons cannot access your gun. They make safes of various sizes that can hold a single pistol on a nightstand for rapid access in an emergency, or that hold dozens of rifles and pistols to protect them from theft and access. A safe requires either a key or a combination to access your guns, and they even have models that will work with an RFID chip or a biometric fingerprint scanner. Safes can further be secured by bolting them to the wall or to the floor or to furniture, or they may have a cable that attaches to a table or a nightstand. Click here to see our video on gun storage options. A case is typically portable and will usually only have a single means of locking. If not secured, the entire case may be stolen and because they are usually portable, they are lighter, meaning that they have less layers of protection and are easier to either pop open with a tool or cut open to get into the contents. If you use the case as your primary means of storage, it's a good idea to use some secondary means of security to protect the firearm inside, like a gun lock. There are a variety of types of gun locks available and they can either be purchased or almost all new guns purchased come with a lock inside the box. The most common type of gun lock is a cable lock. The cable lock is a padlock with a length of cable instead of the standard locking hasp. The cable can be threaded through the action or down the barrel and lock the gun so that it cannot be loaded or fired. A trigger lock uses either a key or a combination to secure a device that covers the trigger. These can vary from very heavy duty to flimsy affairs that barely function. The downside to a trigger lock is that they do not disable the ability of the gun to fire and the gun can still be loaded and cocked with these trigger locks in place. If pulled hard enough, they may still allow the gun to shoot. A breech lock inserts into the open action of the gun, blocking it from accepting or feeding ammunition into the chamber. A magazine lock works similarly to a breech lock and prevents a magazine from being inserted into the gun and also prevents the action from closing. If you plan to carry or transport your firearm outside of your home, there are some special considerations to be aware of. Some are just good practices to get into and some may be required by laws in your jurisdiction. We'll go over them from the perspective of good practices and let you see which laws apply in your area. For a handgun, it's essential that you acquire a good quality holster. This holster will attach to your body so that your gun is accessible, secure, and you have a place to put your gun while you're doing things like loading magazines, stapling targets, or adjusting your protective equipment. A good quality holster should be safe, cover the trigger guard of your gun, be secure so that it isn't falling off or the gun isn't falling out, it should properly fit your gun, and it should only be accessible to you. For more on holster selection, click here to watch our video on holsters. A gun case, range bag, or scabbard is used to transport your gun between your home and the range or hunting camp. It keeps your gun and accessories contained together and easy to find, and it also protects your guns from getting scratched up. A good range bag will let you carry spare magazines, a stapler for targets, eye and ear protection, a cleaning kit, and other important accessories so that you have them handy when you need them. A good rifle scabbard will not only fit your rifle, but any optics that you have mounted on it and protect your scopes from being knocked out of alignment and protect the glass from scratches. For carrying a rifle in the field, a good sling is an essential piece of equipment that will let you safely secure your rifle to your shoulder, freeing your hands for other tasks. Not only is a good sling going to not interfere with your pack, it will let you safely stow your gun while hiking, crossing fences and streams, and remain where you put it. An adjustable sling will not only secure your long gun for transport, but can be used as an additional support for a more secure and stable shooting platform. We will discuss more about slings in the rifle video in this series. The foundation of concealed carry is a good quality belt. A belt will support your holster and you want to get one designed specifically for carrying a firearm. There are a wide variety of belts for this purpose and they have various styles of appearance so that they coordinate with your fashion and wardrobe. The key thing that these belts have in common is some sort of internal stiffener to prevent the belt from sagging under the weight of a holstered firearm. This allows the belt to hold its shape and prevents the gun from sliding around so that it will stay where you put it and it will be there if you need it. The surest way to win a lifetime supply of ammunition is to get into a shootout without any way to reload your gun. For this reason, it's a good idea to carry a means to reload your defensive firearm. Not just because you may need more ammunition than the gun will hold, but because like anything, a magazine may break or fail when you need it, and having another one is the quickest way to fix the problem. 
You will want to get some means to carry your spare magazines or revolver speed loaders, and there are a wide variety of choices available. I like to carry two spare magazines in addition to the one in the gun. For this purpose, I carry a double magazine pouch that is custom made to fit my magazines. This ensures that they will not slide out if I bend over, but that I can get the magazines out quickly and easily if I need them. If you opt to just carry a single spare, then they make single magazine pouches as well. You can also use two single pouches to carry two magazines if that works better for you or if you have trouble finding a double pouch for your magazines. When it comes to ammunition, it's not only important to get the correct ammunition that will safely feed, fire, and extract from your gun. You must also match your ammunition to the desired purpose. Different ammunition is designed for practice, hunting, self-defense, or competition. Each type of ammunition will have different specifications, such as bullet shape, weight, and the ability to expand, segment, or fragment. There are also ammunitions that have better penetration, and those that will disintegrate on contact for use in indoor ranges. The first consideration is to get a bullet that is the right diameter for your gun. This is the caliber of the bullet, but as we mentioned before, the diameter of the bullet is just the first part of the equation. You also have to get the correct cartridge for your gun. The correct cartridge will be listed in the manual and also stamped into the frame or barrel of your gun. Getting the right cartridge for your gun is just the first part of the equation. Depending on what you want to use the gun for, you will want to tailor the weight of the bullet to the activity. If you are hunting big game, you may want a heavier bullet to hit harder. If you're trying to shoot farther, you may want a lighter bullet to go faster. For self-defense, you need to find a bullet that is the sweet spot between being controllable and stopping an attacker faster. The heavier a bullet is, the more recoil you feel when you shoot it. It also means that it will either need more powder in the cartridge or it will travel slower. Smaller and lighter bullets tend to go faster, but recoil less. As an example, three typical loads for standard 9mm are 115 grains, 124 grains, and 147 grains. The 115 grain bullets weigh less, so they have less felt recoil, and they may be a better choice for someone with less hand strength or a new shooter who hasn't learned to control recoil yet. A stronger person or a more experienced shooter may want to opt for the 147 grain bullet because it hits harder and will stop a bad guy faster. The 124 grain may be a good middle of the road choice for a progressing shooter who is still working up in skill. Another reason for choosing a particular bullet weight is the size of the gun that you'll be firing them from. The heavier the gun, the less that you will feel the recoil. If I shoot the same cartridge from a pistol that weighs 3 pounds and from one that weighs 6 pounds, the amount of recoil that I feel will be more in the 3 pound gun. This is because the recoil has to overcome the mass of the gun. If I have a smaller gun, I may want to opt for a smaller weight bullet for this reason. Velocity is how fast the bullet leaves the gun. Oftentimes, this will be listed on the box. The listed velocity may not be what you will actually achieve out of your gun, but it allows you to compare it to other ammunition fired out of a gun with the same length barrel to get an idea of the speed. Stopping power is essentially speed times mass, so the faster and heavier a bullet is, the more damage it will do to the things that it hits. This is a very simplified example, but it works for what we're talking about. If I decrease the weight of my bullet, then the bullet will go faster. If I decrease the velocity, then the bullet will go slower but it will also affect the amount of felt recoil and the damage to the target. There are two main types of bullets that you will choose from, the full metal jacket and the hollow point. You'll want to make your decision based on a few factors. A full metal jacket bullet, sometimes referred to as ball ammo, is a solid projectile covered in a thin layer of metal, usually copper, that helps it feed into the gun more reliably. This ammunition is typically much cheaper, has less recoil, more flash, uses dirtier powder, and is more readily available. It's a great choice for practice ammunition. Because it is less likely to slow down in a target or a game animal, it's a poor choice for self-defense or hunting, as it is more likely to pass through and be dangerous to others. A jacketed hollow point, or JHP, expands upon impact, so that it kind of puts on the brakes, slowing down and dumping its energy into whatever it hits. The softer the target, the more it dumps its energy. The expansion also creates a larger hole. This combination of a larger hole and more energy creates greater trauma, making a JHP a good choice for self-defense and for hunting. These bullets are also safer for this purpose, as they are less likely to pass through the target and continue downrange with a dangerous velocity. Not to say that they will not pass through, but they have a lesser likelihood. As I mentioned before, 
Just because the bullet is the right diameter doesn't mean that it will work in your gun. And just because it will fit in your gun doesn't mean that it is safe to shoot it. Check your owner's manual to see if your gun can safely shoot enhanced power loads such as plus P. These loads are more powerful to increase the velocity of the bullet, but not all guns are rated to shoot these enhanced loads. Make sure that you have the correct ammunition for your gun, and if you don't have all of the information, such as bullet weight, velocity, or cartridge, don't try to shoot it. Know what your gun uses, and know what you are using in your gun. It is also important to make sure that you don't carry multiple types of ammunition at the same time. A day at the range can go from fun to deadly by dumping a bunch of different cartridges in your pocket and accidentally loading the wrong one into your gun. Another thing I frequently see is a potpourri of different loads in a single gun. Purchase enough of a particular ammunition and load the same thing into your gun and practice with that. Different ammunition will have different amounts of noise, flash, and recoil, and you need to know what to expect when you pull the trigger. With a variety of different ammunitions, it's anyone's guess how it will feel when you shoot it. There are two common types of ammunition that you will encounter. There are others, like percussion caps and pin fires, but for what you'll be using, you mainly have to worry about center fire and rim fire. The biggest differences are caliber availability and reliability. Center fire cartridges, as I mentioned earlier, use a cup of primer compound in the center of the cartridge case. The firing pin strikes the cartridge in the center of the case. With rim fire ammunition, the primer material is located in the rim of the case's base and the firing pin strikes it on the edge. A center fire cartridge is far more reliable than a rim fire. Rim fire cases frequently misfire or fail to fire when the trigger is pulled. This makes them great for target practice or small game hunting, but not the most solid choice for self-defense or that bull of a lifetime. Also, rim fire is available in just a small number of bullet offerings. Another consideration is that when purchasing ammunition, it's important to know if your gun is a center fire or a rim fire. While a 223 and a 22 long rifle use the same caliber of bullet, it is the same diameter, the 223 is a center fire and the 22 is a rim fire, so they are not interchangeable. Make sure that you are using the correct ammunition in your gun. No matter what type of brand or caliber of ammunition you use, eventually you will experience an ammunition malfunction. This can be caused for a variety of reasons and even the highest quality ammunition will fail to fire properly from time to time. In my years of shooting, I have seen all kinds of things that were wrong with ammunition, from cracked cases, to primers that were upside down, to bullets that were upside down, to crushed cases. You name it, I've encountered it at some point. Another common ammunition issue is ammunition that has been improperly stored and begun to degrade. For more on this, see our video on whether ammunition expires by clicking here. A misfire is any time that you pull the trigger and the cartridge fails to fire. You get a click instead of a bang. If this happens, you want to wait 30 seconds before you open the action and clear the misfired round of ammunition from the gun. Keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Keep your finger off the trigger, tap the magazine firmly to make sure that it is seated correctly, and then cycle the gun to get the bad round out and a new round in. A hang fire is a perceptible delay between when the primer is struck and when the round fires. There are many things that can cause this, but if this happens, the answer is the same as it is for a hang fire. A squib is when a round develops less than normal pressure when the primer is struck. This can be caused by the powder inside the case failing to ignite or only some of the powder ignites. You'll notice a difference in recoil and noise when this happens. The danger is that the less than normal pressure can cause the bullet to become stuck in the barrel of the gun, causing an obstructed barrel, which can damage the gun and cause an injury or death to the shooter if another round is fired. If this happens, stop shooting immediately Keep your finger off the trigger. Keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Wait 30 seconds, and then clear the malfunction. Because the bullet may be lodged in the barrel, it is very important to check the barrel to ensure that it is not obstructed. Do not look down the barrel of the gun, but use one of the methods that I described earlier in this video to make sure that the barrel is free from obstructions. If you have defective ammunition, it's important that you do not try to shoot it. Defective ammunition can develop pressures higher than that are safe for your gun. They can blow apart in the chamber and they can cause damage to your gun or at the very least they can prevent your gun from working properly until the problem is fixed. And never transport a gun that has a live round stuck inside the gun. Figure out how to remove the live round before you transport it.
This is very common with an AR-15 that has not been properly oiled. One trick for that is to mortar the gun by holding back the bolt catch and firmly driving the buttstock into the ground while the rifle is pointed in a safe direction. This will usually remove the stuck round or tear it in half and the primer and powder will fall out, making it safe to transport it to a gunsmith. The biggest enemy of ammunition is moisture. Humidity can deteriorate powder in the casing of the cartridge. Over time, corrosion or oxidation can weaken the case and cause potential rupture points. Never submerge ammunition in water, never expose it to solvents, oils, gun cleaners, or other substances designed to break down the components of the cartridge. Don't store it any place with wide temperature variations that can cause condensation to build up inside and outside of the cartridge. These conditions can make the ammunition unsafe and unreliable. Any ammunition that you carry for self-defense should be rotated frequently. I run mine through the FBI qualifications about every six months and replace it with fresh ammo so that I can depend on it to be reliable if I need it. And finally, make sure that you safely store your ammunition as well as your firearms. Little gremlins like to do things with ammunition, like hit it with a hammer, throw it in a fire, or take it apart, and that can be very dangerous. Make sure that your ammunition is locked up and inaccessible to unauthorized users. In addition to your new gun, there are several accessories that you'll want to consider purchasing. To be a safe gun owner means only shooting your gun when you have proper eye and ear protection. There are a wide variety of different hearing protection, and if you click here, you can see our video on choosing the right hearing protection for you. Eye protection needs to be ballistically rated safety glasses that cover the entire eyes. This will protect you from hot burning gases, ricochets, and parts of flying gun coming off if there is a catastrophic failure of your gun. A holster is a must-have item for a pistol, even if you don't plan on carrying it for protection. It gives you a safe place to put your gun while you're doing other tasks at the range. A case is a great way to safely, and in some cases legally, transport your gun. There are a wide variety of optics that you can outfit your gun with. These include scopes, red dots, magnifiers, and many others. As I get older, I find that I really like having a red dot mounted on my pistol. Others are fine with traditional iron sights, but want to upgrade them with something with tritium vials so that they are easier to see at night. A clean gun is a happy gun, and there are a ton of options available for cleaning your gun. Click here to see our video on gun cleaning options. In addition to gun cleaning kits, there are choices when it comes to oils and solvents. That same video goes over those options as well. Whichever you choose, make sure that you are keeping your gun properly oiled according to the recommendations in your manual. When it comes to cleaning, it seems that there are never enough patches in any kit I buy, so I purchase more in bulk. There are paper and cotton patches, and I find I prefer the cotton t-shirt material patches as they last longer and they also leave behind less lint. Most guns come with at least one spare magazine, but I suggest getting more. As you practice, you'll wear them out, and it's also nice to have a few to practice with and also your designated carry magazines. If it's for your hunting rifle, you never know when you may drop one in the field and it will be lost. If you have a spare, your hunt can go on. I think that there is no accessory as useful for developing safe practice than snap caps or dummy rounds. These inert cartridges let you safely practice becoming proficient with manipulating your gun. These inert cartridges let you safely practice becoming proficient with manipulating your gun, and I recommend getting a pack in whatever caliber you own a gun in. You can't hit what you can't see, and if you need your gun in the dark, it's imperative that you be able to positively identify what or who you are shooting at. A bright flashlight, either mounted on your gun or carried with it, will let you clearly illuminate what you're shooting at. A laser will help you quickly aim while looking at the target. There are a wide range of laser sights, and many of them also have lights that can be mounted to your gun. A good sling is an essential accessory for any long gun. It frees your hands and means you don't have to set down your gun if you need to do something. It keeps your gun out of the way when hiking, and if you learn to use it properly, it can act as an additional support for more stable shooting. And for long range sessions, I love a magazine loader like this Uplula Universal Magazine Loader. It saves a lot of wear on the old thumbs, and when you're putting hundreds of rounds down range, and it speeds up your reloading time so you can spend more time shooting and less time loading magazines. As a gun owner, it's your responsibility to be safe in handling your gun. You have both a moral and a legal responsibility to handle your firearm in a safe way. You need to be a good example to others, especially young people. 
By instilling the importance of gun safety in the next generation, you'll be showing the respect that guns deserve. This is never a case of do as I say and not as I do. By practicing frequently, you will become safer and more proficient in your gun handling. It is not uncommon to catch yourself doing something unsafe, and if you do, immediately take note of it, stop yourself, and fix the problem. The more you practice safety, the more you will become aware of how many around you are behaving in an unsafe manner. Firmly but gently insist that anyone around you be safe with their guns. They risk their lives as well as yours. Take the opportunity to teach them to be safer with their guns and make sure that anyone you take with you is taught how to be safe when using a gun. And lastly, get as much training as you possibly can. A video is a great way to gain some understanding and knowledge, but nothing will replace hands-on learning. Every sportsman's warehouse in the nation offers a concealed carry class. Even if you don't plan on carrying a gun for self-defense, these classes are a great place to start as they will teach you safety, reinforce that with hands-on manipulation of your gun, and also go over the laws that apply where you live. A hunter's education class will be a great place to learn about using your long guns and also the laws and ethics of hunting in your state. Guns are inherently dangerous, but they can be handled safely with the right mindset and some basic precautions. Developing a mindset of safety and making safety a priority is the first step. Understanding that ignorance is forgivable, but carelessness is not, will help eliminate the two primary causes of firearms-related accidents. Having a positive attitude that you can learn to be safe and use your gun proficiently, gathering knowledge on how to be safe and use your gun effectively, and developing skill through intentional practice will help cement the three principles of gun safety. And always treating all guns as if they are loaded, never letting the muzzle cover anything that you don't intend to destroy, keeping your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target and you have made the decision to fire, and knowing your target and what is beyond it will be the four rules that will keep you and those around you safe. Gun safety really is as easy as one, two, three, four, and with the right mindset and training, you can become an effective and safe gun user. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in learning more, be sure to watch our other videos in this series on basics of rifle, basics of shotgun, basics of revolver, and basics of pistols. We'll have links in the description below. Shoot straight, be safe, and have fun.